Welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. Today we'll hear from Volusia Here and Now reporter Joanne Magley about this year's record-setting food drive from public employees. Then health reporter Stephanie Strong will bring us a story from the Volusia County Health Department about getting your flu shot. And finally, Community Information Director Dave Byron will be in the studio for his weekly interview. Those segments, news, and more coming up on Volusia Magazine. Stay tuned. Daytona Beach International Airport is winding up 2011 with a nice gain in passenger traffic and the completion of a major rehabilitation of its main runway. Passenger traffic at DBIA was up 11% in October and November. During October, 44,404 incoming and outgoing passengers traveled through Daytona Beach International Airport. This compares with just 40,092 passengers recorded in October of last year. This was an increase of 11 percent. The airport recorded 41,620 incoming and outgoing passengers in November, comparing with the 37,402 passengers last year, also an increase of 11 percent. For the year ending November 30th, 547,102 passengers flew in and out of the county-operated airport, 11 percent higher than the prior year when the airport accommodated 491,339 total passengers. We've really had a good run. We're uh, up 23 months out of the last 24. We're, we're going to see some travel peaks here at Daytona Beach and most airports in Florida are exactly the same way. Usually January it goes down a little bit, but then it's going to kick way up in February when we hit the high point of our busy season. So, uh, you know, we're, we're optimistic. We think it's going to keep growing. The traffic increases in October and November follow a trend that began in November 2009. Since that time, airline passenger traffic has increased in 24 of the last 25 months. It's a combination of fares and it's a combination of having the larger airplanes here in Daytona Beach. And the schedules that we're seeing still have those big planes. So I think we're going to get more people, you know, who are going to find it just plain easy to fly Daytona Beach International Airport. For more information, you can go to flydaytonafirst.com. Fireplaces and space heaters can make a room toasty, but officials with the Volusia County Fire Services urge residents to use them with extreme caution. Turning up the heat can increase the risk of home heating fires. According to the National Fire Protection Association, nearly half of all home heating fires occur between December and February. Heating equipment, primarily space heaters and fireplaces, caused nearly 59,000 home structure fires, resulting in 480 deaths in 2009. Well, typically with the cold weather, we start to see an increase in uh, fire problems with home heating alternative sources. Some of those are, as you well know, uh, space heaters, which are electric, also uh, fuel-driven space heaters, and then also kerosene heaters. Um, some of the problems that we have, people use those in conjunction with animals and pets in the area, which tends to provide uh, an unstable environment for those heating sources, which will lead to a fire. Placement or use of those in an environment where they shouldn't, such as close to curtains, or other flammable items that are nearby. Uh, some of the other things that we see is uh, carbon monoxide exposure because of the reduction in clean air inside the environment. Even fireplaces can be dangerous. The problem with fireplace use is people need to make sure that they keep them inspected at least once a year, preferably before the season starts. Number two, they want to reduce the buildup of creosote inside. And the recommendation is that Whenever they burn, they have at least a hot fire twice a day inside that fireplace to get rid of that creosote and then on top of that cleaning. Volusia County Fire Services and some city fire agencies offer free smoke alarms and installation assistance to residents. Residents are encouraged to contact their local fire department for smoke alarm information. And for more information about fire prevention, you can visit volusia.org slash fire services. Hello, I'm Joey Alexander with the Volusia County Council. 
Did you know we have a turtle and seabird rehabilitation center right here in Volusia County? Since opening in 2002, the Marine Science Center in Potts Inlet has cared for thousands of sick and injured sea turtles and birds and released many of them back to the sea. The Marine Science Center also has a touch pool, exhibit gallery, and areas where you can watch our specialists caring for marine animals. This unique center is next to the Potts Inlet Lighthouse. To learn more and plan your day trip, visit marinesciencecenter.com. More than 20,000 pounds of food has been donated by a new countywide public employee food drive that's been named Public Employees Feed the Need. Here with more on the story is Volusia Here and Now reporter Joanne Magri. In Volusia County, last quarter, we distributed to about 80,000 people. We've actually had a food pantry for probably seven or eight years. We have about 90 partner agencies. Uh, but never on the magnitude that it is now. There's about 55 of those are actual food pantries where you can go and get a box or a bag of food. It's been like this for about three years. A lot of our food pantries are writing up average 10 new clients per day. But before that, it was just mostly in church and people that were shut in, and we actually took it to their houses. But now it's too big for that. Many people believe that the problems associated with hunger are confined to small pockets of society, certain areas of the country, or certain neighborhoods. But families are going hungry right here in Volusia County. These are often hardworking adults, children, and seniors who simply cannot make ends meet and are forced to go without food for several meals or even days. This was the line of people waiting to get food recently from the pantry at the New Hope Baptist Church in Deltona. Brenda Bowers is one of the coordinators for the pantry, which serves about 184 families each month. This pantry is one of about 80 in the county that partners with Second Harvest Food Bank in Daytona Beach. Second Harvest is a private, nonprofit organization that collects and distributes donated food. Bob Thomas is the branch manager. The big plus of a food bank is that we do make sure that any food pantry that's distributing food is adhering to all the, the rules and regulation for proper food storage. All of our food pantries go through a safe food handling class. Um, we do monitor them once a year to make sure that they are storing food properly and that there's proper distribution. We distributed about 4.2 million pounds out of this warehouse last year, which is up about a million pounds from the year previous. Uh, of course, the good news is that we had that extra million pounds. We were able to get that to, to help the people that are in need. But the bad news is we needed an extra million pounds, and it still wasn't enough. Not enough because many pantries are seeing an increase of new clients needing food. That's why it's so important for those who are able to donate food to a food drive. When you donate food to a food drive, most of the time it goes to a food bank, like the Second Harvest Food Bank, which then inspects, sorts, and distributes the food to pantries throughout the county. Bernie McDaniels runs the pantry at South Daytona Christian Church. Our job is to help other people, and this is our way of, one of our ways. We have a lot of different ministries. This is just one of them, to, to help the people, to get them in here and get them the food. The pantry has been in operation for eight years, but never to its current magnitude. We used to do it every week, but we've had to cut to twice a month because of the food shortage. Um, they can come whatever two weeks they want. We're open every week, but they can only come now twice a month until the food picks up again. And in December, just in time for the holidays, the food certainly did pick up again, thanks to the giving power of public employees throughout Volusia County. At the request of Volusia County Manager Jim Deneen, public employees from Volusia County Government, Volusia County Schools, the Volusia County Health Department, Daytona State College, and the cities of Daytona Beach, Daytona Beach Shores, DeBerry, DeLand, Edgewater, Holly Hill, 
New Smyrna Beach, Orange City, Ormond Beach, Pearson, Ponce Inlet, Port Orange, and South Daytona had a friendly competition to see which organization could raise the most food. The drive was named Public Employees Feed the Need, and did they? More than 14,000 public employees raised more than 38,000 pounds of food. That set a record for the food drive campaign coordinated through Second Harvest Food Bank. And the organization that raised the most food per full-time employee? Holly Hill. With just 103 employees, they collected 4,002 pounds of food, or 38 pounds per employee. In all, the Public Employee Feed the Need food drive fed more than 800 families of four for nearly a week. For Volusia Here and Now, I'm Joanne Magley. If you haven't received your flu shot yet, the Volusia County Health Department reminds you it's not too late. With the peak of flu season coming up, it's important to take all preventative measures to protect yourself from influenza. In this segment of Community Health Matters, Stephanie Strong tells us the Volusia County Health Department is offering flu and pneumonia vaccines at all four clinic locations in Daytona Beach, New Smyrna Beach, DeLand, and Deltona. Getting vaccinated against influenza is very important to help ensure the health of you and your loved ones. The flu season can be very unpredictable, and the flu may strike at any time. You here for a flu shot? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever had one before? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you allergic to eggs? Uh, no, ma'am. Your eggs okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's not too late to get vaccinated. 36,000 people die annually from flu-related illnesses nationwide, and another 200,000 people are hospitalized. The flu is unpredictable and can be serious, even for healthy people. A flu vaccine is your best protection. Who needs to be vaccinated against the flu? You. Protect yourself, your friends, and your family. Get a flu vaccine. For more information, www.flu.gov. Flu prevention tips. Cover your nose and mouth with a tissue when you cough or sneeze. Throw the tissue in the trash after you use it. Wash your hands often with soap and water. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand rub. If you are sick with flu-like illness, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that you stay home for at least 24 hours after your fever is gone, except to get medical care or for other necessities. Your fever should be gone without the use of a fever-reducing medicine. If you're ill and you're sneezing and coughing, uh, then you can actually spread your infection to others. Uh, and in, in order to avoid spreading the infection to others, uh, we ask folks to stay home, uh, isolate themselves at home if they are ill and, and try to avoid spreading the infection to other people. Flu and pneumonia vaccines are being offered at all Volusia County Health Department clinic locations. For more information, please visit www.volusiahealth.com. For Volusia Magazine and on behalf of the Volusia County Health Department, your guide to better health, I'm Public Information Officer Stephanie Strong. For more information about this and any other health-related issues, you can log on to volusiahealth.com. And now let's join Community Information Director Dave Byron in the studio for this week's in-depth interview. Well, thank you, Amber, and Happy New Year, everyone. You know, the county's Marine Science Center in Ponce Inlet has gained a national reputation for its work in rehabilitating injured sea turtles and sea birds. Visiting this marine education facility is a great way to see marine life up close and in person and to learn about Volusia County's unique ecosystems. With us in the studio today for an update on the County's Marine Science Center is the director, Michael Brothers. Michael, thanks for being with us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's my pleasure to be here. Hey, Michael, last year, uh, right about this time, we were talking to you, and you said that uh, you wrapped up last year with record attendance. Uh, what's the story this year? Well, and... You know, whenever you set a record, you, then the expectation is, can you do it again? Yeah. And, you know, we were so fortunate that this year we even uh, surpassed all the expectations that we had about how 
great a year we might have, and we uh, bumped up not only uh, over 10% in attendance, mm -hmm. uh, but even in this down economy, our gift shop and other revenue uh, generated our record revenue. So it was a great record setting year once again. And I would guess, I don't know, but I would guess that, you know, a couple of reasons for that. One is, is that uh, the word keeps getting out greater and greater. You're getting a, a, a more widespread reputation. And second of all, I think a lot of people are looking for things to do around their, their own area. You're exactly right. And uh, we have really seen an uptick in uh, a lot of the local people who right. are, are finding us. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that you, you think everybody should know about us, but you know, we're always surprised that there are people who haven't been to the Marine Science Center yet. And you know, we just uh, try and encourage those people to come down and see us. And, and in fact, uh, just uh, with the, the first day that we were open after Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, we had another record setting day. Over 471 people came in um, and we had just uh, lines out the door. Michael, uh, <coughs> it's a good opportunity, I guess, you start talking about getting the word out uh, for folks that may not be familiar with the Marine Science Center. Give us kind of a layman's uh, round the horn description, if you will. Right. Well, when visitors come to the Marine Science Center, the first thing that they get a chance to do is come into the main exhibit area right. where we have exhibits that uh, really showcase the, the local stories, the stories of the marine environments right of uh, here in Volusia County. So they can see the mangrove ecosystems and we have aquariums that uh, showcase the denizens of the mangrove. Uh, we'll have a chance for our visitors to see some of our freshwater turtles. They can uh, see an exhibit about the, uh, the jetties and the mm -hmm. fish that live around the jetties and, and other organisms. Uh, but everybody's favorite right now has to be our stingray touch pool. Wow. And uh, the, you know, this year was the first full year that we've had the stingray touch pool in place. And it's a chance for people to actually uh, have a chance to stick that hand in and have a uh, cow nose ray come s just flying up through the water and just gently touch them. And people's faces, when they've touched a stingray for the first time, is an uh -huh. extraordinary thing. No sting, no, huh? We have taken them off, so it's all <laughs> safe. That's awesome. Hey, you know, Michael, uh, w one of the things that uh, the Marine Science Center uh, has gained a, a really a national reputation for um, is this work that you do to rehab uh, injured sea turtles, and it's just unbelievable what goes on down there. I know you were just telling me before we were taping here that you've got a 180-pound loggerhead, I guess, <laughs> that you're uh, rehabbing right now. Tell us about yeah. the hospital portion of this. Well, you, you are right, and we have uh, one of the uh, premier uh, sea turtle hospitals in the United States. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful facility, and uh, so far this year, we've taken care of uh, 107 uh, sea turtles, uh, larger ones, um, and then in addition, we get the little ones, the little babies, the hatchlings and the washbacks, right. and um, right now we have uh, over uh, 50 uh, hatchlings and washbacks in the oh, Science okay. Center right now. Uh, and in addition, we have 11 sea turtles uh, right at this very moment. And one of them is uh, the uh, uh, one that we call Andre, Andre, Andre the Giant. <laughs> and he is a 180 pound sea turtle. And notice I said he, because <laughs> most of the sea turtles that we get in either, you can't tell the sexes because the sexes are very, very similar, um, or they're usually females. But this one was unusual in that it is a 180-pound male. Wow. And uh, it is a powerful animal. Wow. And uh, uh, we are uh, actually very encouraged that this one is uh, going to recover. It's had a, a number of issues, including some infections. Uh, we're treating all of those. Uh, luckily, we do have a, a wonderful relationship now. Uh, one of the great things that's happened within this last year uh, was a uh, a partnership with the University of Florida School of Veterinary Medicine. Uh -huh. And so now uh, we have veterinary services provided by Dr. Craig Pelton, uh, who is a uh, University of Florida School of Veterinary Medicine uh, veterinarian who takes care of our sea turtles and our birds and, and even our, our wow. aquariums. And so fishes. where did Andre uh, come from? Did he come from the University of Florida? Or, uh, <laughs> or did he back ambulance bring him He's over or what? We are very fortunate to have such a a, a great team that's not just the Marine Science Center, but a lot of other uh, uh, ancillary facilities and volunteers 
and other groups that help get sea turtles to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, uh, the Beach Patrol is a main player in that. Right. And so uh, this sea turtle came and in, in Volusia County onto the beaches. Wow. And then the Beach Patrol loaded it up and carried it to us. So uh, it allows us to act more as the emergency room rather than the ambulance service. So you've got a 180 pound <coughs> turtle. What does this turtle eat? Anything at once. That's right. <laughs> He's got uh, the no, uh, that's no right. strings attached diet, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, we actually feed it mainly fish, uh -huh. uh, but uh, also we put in uh, vitamins and other things in the, uh -huh. in the fish and make sure that it gets the diet that it needs. When do you think Andre will uh, be heading back to the ocean? Probably be a few more months yet. You um, think he'll be the star uh, well, on Turtle Day? That would be a, a fabulous uh, addition to Turtle Day, uh, ah. which will happen in mid-April this right. year. And uh, we, of course, encourage all the viewers to come out to Turtle Day when right. we will be releasing a sea turtle. And we can only hope it'll be Andre. When uh, visitors come through the Marine Science Center, Michael, I know that they can get uh, a, a very close-up view of the animal hospital portion of this. They mm -hmm. you actually have, I think, a, an observation area where people can watch the specialists and see the turtles under rehab and so forth, and people just seem to be uh, uh, amazed by all of that. You are right, and uh, uh, the viewing area has been a, a real hit, a chance for people to see uh, the, the people actually working on the turtles or just see the turtles as they're in rehab. But right. we actually have something new and in January, we are going to be developing an, a number of uh, new opportunities for visitors. And we are putting in a viewing window uh, into our turtle surgery area. Wow. And that's going to allow visitors not only to look in where they can now into the, where the sea turtles are uh, resting or being fed or whatever mm -hmm. in the tanks, but we're actually going to open up a view into the surgery center where we are uh, working on turtles, everything from food prep to actually uh, uh, working on the turtles uh, wow. with the, the, both the vet and uh, with our, our staff. So Absolutely. it'll be a, a, a wonderful new addition. And I know, Michael, uh, one of the things that uh, occurs during the winter time, pro probably not so far this winter, but when it gets really cold, uh, a lot of the turtles out there in the waters of uh, central Florida become cold stung and uh, they end up at the Marine Science Center for, uh, I guess, to get warmed up again. <laughs> and uh, it's true. Uh, that hasn't happened so far this year, I bet. R right, that has not been a problem at all this year. Um, of course, we had uh, two winters, the last two winters, we had uh, cold stun events. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're right, well, we brought them in. In fact, uh, two winters ago, we had so many sea turtles come in. There was a, really a statewide uh, phenomenon of wow. uh, 3,000 sea turtles uh, were cold stunned wow. and we just became part of a network of facilities that were dealing with them. We had to actually cordon off a whole section of the exhibit gallery and make it into a, a makeshift hospital. We had a little triage so area. <laughs> we wow. did unbelievable. You know, one of the other things that's uh, a big hit down there and one of the good, good uh, things that the uh, Marine Science Center does, you also have a bird component and uh, you rehabilitate seabirds. And uh, that has turned out to be just as popular as the turtle element. It is. Uh, the, the bird hospital, of course, you're, it's a very different type of volume of animals. Right. You know, we've had 107 sea turtles this year. We've had 1,200 birds come into the bird wow. hospital. So we have, there's a tremendous need for our bird hospital from all of the, especially the seabirds, the uh, uh, gannets and the pelicans and the gulls uh, and many, many other species have come into a bird hospital every year. D uh, developing a couple new things for this year. One is the new viewing area into the surgery yeah. center. Uh, another one is a, uh, a new set of exhibits about the, uh, uh, some of the offshore communities, including uh, the artificial reef program. So wow. uh, we're going to be uh, using some of our exhibits to showcase the great work that the county is doing. Uh, in uh, improving the fishing opportunities through the artificial reef program. I know, uh, of course, this whole, the whole idea of the Marine Science Center was to tie into Volusia County's environmental management program and its coastal dune management program and endangered species management and so forth. And you have a, a, a couple of things that people can do. One is, is you have a lot of classes down there. And then, of course, you have uh, group tours as well. 
We sure do, and uh, of course, thousands of school kids come every year. Right. Uh, but in addition, we have lots of uh, visiting groups, uh, everything from homeschool groups to bus tours and, um, and just the general public. Uh, sometimes we get things like uh, uh, reunion groups. Uh, uh, Seabreeze High School had uh, their reunion group come down to the Marine Science Center just this a uh, uh, couple months ago. Wow, that, that's a different way to spend uh, it, a it reunion is. time with uh, old yeah. folks coming back to, from uh, their classmates and so forth. Michael, uh, I, I guess it's probably a little early to plan up for the summer uh, you know, season with the kids and so forth, but you also have some great summer programs for kids. We do, and, and it's amazing. I have already gotten two phone calls from people who want to know when can they sign up for summer camps. Right. Our summer camps are so popular. We offer uh, usually about 10 weeks of summer camp, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the school schedule for the, for the summer, and uh, they book up. And right. so uh, we uh, usually announce it towards the end of uh, January. We make the announcement of what uh, classes are going to be offered. But we already have parents uh, looking to sign up even this early in the year. So this is not one of those things that you want to procrastinate yeah, on. Better get your kid ready early. <laughs> yeah. Michael, uh, for those folks who, who don't know where the Marine Science Center is, uh, give us kind of a geography lesson as to how you get there. Absolutely. The Marine Science Center is located in Ponce Inlet. It's very near the lighthouse. Uh, the easiest way to get there is to just uh, uh, get on uh, Atlantic Avenue, which right. is the road that runs right along the beach, and head south all the way until you can't go any farther. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see a toll booth that would allow you access into Lighthouse Point Park. Uh, but there's one last chance to turn right, and that is on Lighthouse Drive. Just turn right, and we're immediately on the right. And a uh, rather reasonable admission fee, too. Or was it? It's like $4, isn't it? We have the best deal around. <laughs> uh, it's $5 for adults, $4 for seniors, and $2 for kids. Wow. And uh, for those people that may want to just take a, take a look online at what you do, do uh, you have a website, Michael? You know that we do. So <laughs> it's uh, marinesciencecenter.com. Wow. And well, it, it sounds like, Michael, that things are going uh, just uh, great down at the Marine Science Center. Certainly been one of the uh, great success stories of county government. I go way back to when this was an idea, and, you know, here it right. is uh, some years later, and this thing has turned out to be, uh, I think, even more successful than people imagined. So sounds like it's a lot of fun down there, too. We enjoy it. Michael, thanks for sharing the uh, information with us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Our guest today is Michael Brothers. He's the director of the county's Marine Science Center in Ponce Inlet. And with that, Amber, we'll go back to you. Thanks, Dave. And thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about our program, just give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org. Don't forget to listen to Volusia Today, Volusia County Government's public information radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson. Have a great evening.